Hello and welcome to episode 156 of the Talking Wednesday podcast. James and Jake here for you today to bring you through all the Sheffield Wednesday news, speculation, bits to talk about, matches, the fact that we're only three points off safety somehow, but we will get to all of that. First of all, we start the podcast how we always start the podcast, going over to Jake. How has your week been, my friend? Um, stressful this week. Uh, I've had a lot of tech issues, which I spoke to you about beforehand and having to send stuff back. And today was weird. Today was the weird one. I'll get into that in a minute, but it's been stressful. been trying to sort some stuff out in here. We got a new sofa we had to put together. And then my small child that is only 11 weeks old decided to try and sit up. You're not meant to do that till six months. Stop it. <laughs> See. Oh, it, so it, how do you combat that exactly? Um, you don't. You just have to have eyes in the back of your head. It's good, don't get me wrong. It's good that he's wanting to do that early doors. It's just be a baby for a little bit, please, kind of thing. Don't grow too fat. Uh, and today, uh, I've never felt more like an old man in my own home than I did today. Like, I'm not even kidding. So... Basically, I've had to have occupational health out to my house because, you know, I am the man with the bits. And if your audio is, I'm shaking my hand. Um, basically, uh, we're having it adapted so it's a little bit safer for me. But it's like, do you need this? Do you need this? We're going to get you a toilet seat that raises you up by two inches so you can get off the toilet easier and more handrails and stuff like that. Oh, mate. They removed I'm... all the forks out of your drawers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> It it does that. Also. It's like, would you like a commode? It's like, not really, no. But you, your toilet downstairs, we might think about putting you something that you could help with. I'm like, whatever. I've, I've, I feel like today I've been sat in a chair and going, am I seriously feeling like a 70-year-old man sitting here and getting all this stuff in place? Oh, mate, it's been horrible. It's it for the good it, to keep me safe, it, to make sure I'm okay in my own home. But you just hit that realisation in your disability going, oh, God, it is worse than I first thought. And it's not fun. <laughs> How's your week been, no, I, I do, I do feel for you in that regard, because obviously we, we joke and we'll always yeah. try and be light of it. And you've got it in a very good humour, but at the end of the day, it is your life and you have to adapt to it. And as long as it keeps you safe, um, as yeah, safe as 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 sort of jarring as it must be, it's good that you can actually yeah, the work have these is, people come in and sort make sure you sort it out. You know what the worst one was? Do you want a bath pulley to put you in and out the bath? I'm like, okay. <laughs> Just oh mate. How your week been? I had a few days off. Um so I slept, which was nice. Uh, did a bit of visiting, had some guests over, which was, well, had a guest over, which was nice. Um, we just chilled out, really. I Where I could, I um, played. You know what's really weird, and I can't believe I'm saying this? I've got into Fallout 76, Jake. Really? I feel a bit sick saying it because I played that game and I was like, this is an abomination. And I tried again in 2021 and I'm like, this is an abomination, but now it has NPCs. <laughs> and I've gone back to it in 2024 and gone, oh, this has actually got quite a lot of lore in it now and it feels more like a Fallout game and this is a problem. You, you need a new game or a new game series. <laughs> It is, it is my favourite game universe. It is like, it's one of those things that I wanted to be into it, yeah. you know? And because it wasn't, I wasn't taken to it straight away. I was just like, well, this is a terrible game. Because it was, it, well, I, I think it was an appalling game for yeah. a long time. It felt but, like a bit of a cash grab, give up more money kind of thing. It didn't feel polished. It just wasn't ready. It wasn't ready and there was nothing in it. But now, like, for example, there's a full NPC system. There's settlers, there's raiders, there's the Brotherhood of Steel. 
there's events, there's expeditions, you can travel to different parts and stuff. And I'm like, I can kind of see where this is going. It's don't get me wrong. I still prefer my single player fallout experiences, Yeah, but as sort of a live service with the way the world's going in that regard, mm, I can don't get see. Don't get me started on that. I hate the, how the whole bloody gaming industry going into this live service mode. Just give me a single player campaign and leave me alone. Well, I just found myself like, I was like, I was doing some work and in the background I had like law videos on or something because they're quite soothing when you do a bit of work. Mm. And they started going into like 76 law and I was like, I I need to try and just persist with this game because it's 20 years after the yeah. Great War in the timeline. And it's like, there's so much rich history there because most of the games that I've really got into have been like 200 years after. Yeah. So there's all that history. And this is quite close. And obviously, because it becomes canon, they do it in a certain way. And you, you're going back to the very early stuff. And I'm just like, I like that. And I can kind of see, obviously, it's stupid when you, you see, like, some people, that there's ridiculous things in it because it's a live service. But, mm. like, last night, I was I completed the main, sort of the end of the main quest. Right. And there was people that were, like, thousands of levels in there that have clearly been playing it since day one and kept it alive. And it was just nice because they were all very helpful. I didn't say anything to it, but they were all very helpful, like with the bigger stuff and I got bigger rewards and things like yeah. that. And I was like, this is a nice online community, which rare. seems all right. Yeah. It's very yeah. rare you get those kind of community these days. But I think if you think about the sort, sort of people that play Fallout, I play it to sort of... Chill out. It's, yeah, and, and that sort of thing. So going into that regard, having people in that mindset, yeah. It, it's this is going to annoy a lot of people that we brought this topic in at the start of a football podcast. Okay. The fact that we brought the what your games are playing, but it does bring a little bit of uh, difference, to be fair, to it, doesn't it? I'm back uh, playing American Trucking, and okay. I took that game online uh, two days ago, and I've made like all these new friends, and we've just got a dick old chat going. We talk, talk. It's just been really fun, and. They, start, they now know about like my seizures and stuff because I accidentally started playing and forgot to tell them. And so he put the beacons on, like, oh no. <laughs> and all they heard was, oh no. And I was on, I, I was out. <laughs> I said, uh, yeah, you're going to not have to do that because I can't do that due to this, this, and this. And they start talking, and halfway through, they're like, right, well, we need to set some rules then. We've got one member of our thing who doesn't drive normally. He doesn't know the way of driving. So we're going to have to baby him, baby him on how to drive. And it's just like, I've got a mate who's in like now Canada, Peru, Turkey. Just We just all start playing and just have a chat while driving. It's awesome. It's been really good fun. No, oh, that's quite cool. I like that. I don't, I don't really get engaged in that side of it. Um, I don't like talking to people in games. Um, I used to. I, know, I, used I normally to do a lot don't. Of that. I normally don't. I normally kind of like just leave me alone. It just it was just something kept on following me to the point where I said, oh, I went hello, and it just went from there. <laughs> well, I can't play. I can't play with like I try play games with like my best mate, and certain games work. But we actually started playing Fallout seventy six together ages ago, and we were like, we should like this because we both really like this. But we want to do the, the thing about that game that I struggle with, and I play it pretty much on my own, by the way, apart from the events. And I think that's the way to do it. That's what that's where the sweet spot is with mm. that game. Because I like to do those sort of games at my own pace. I don't yeah. want to be dragged about by someone else. But yeah. Other than that, I've been playing a bit of EAFC. Got Michael Smith to an 81 rated card. Icky Ugbo, I'm going to start working on some evolutions for him. I've not played as much, really. I've been doing a lot of the menu grind stuff, trying to get some stuff so I can... When Wednesday uh, I'm not, players I'm not, have I'm not going to tell you what I've been stuff. playing then, because you'll just call me a basic... <laughs> You've been playing Fortnite, we're ending the podcast. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. All right, then. I've been playing Call okay. of Duty. <laughs> That's all right. Bad. <laughs> Call of Duty isn't a bad, it's not a bad game. It just becomes one of those things that, I mean, it's casual central, but that's, it's like FIFA's casual central, yeah. isn't it? And I really I've, like I've, it I've just like been football. leveling up all my, like, my melee weapons and stuff and doing all the challenges. It's just something I can just zone out on and it's easy to zone out. Even though I have to play it with sunglasses on. And turn the brightness level down. But hey. <laughs> this just changed my life, really. All the travel time I used to have. It's now I can have a couple of hours playing a video game or something like that. Weird, isn't it? It's weird when your life just changed a little bit. You can have some you time back. 
yeah, no, it is, it's nice because I can still get everything done I need to get done um, and all of that. Yeah. Um, and not be stressed to the eyeballs all the time, which I was for good two years, really. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's, if you go back in the podcast, there's a time when I said, I'm going to have to work really hard for the next six months to a year or so. You did right? two. Um, and I'm going to have no... I'm going to have very little time for anything else. Oh, I remember. And yeah, it. And, that, and that went on for two and a half years. I remember. <laughs> so it. It, it happened for it a while. It was literally sort of just thing. after lockdown. Yeah. And you were going back and like, I've got to do it for a year. I remember one of the episodes we said before, I said, no, I said, I'll go to do it for a year. And I went, yeah, it came close to two. I've messed up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But then it, re- repercussions came from it. Can't yeah. keep going at that pace. Like, I, I'm... I find myself quite a hard worker and quite dedicated and driven to stuff I do, but um, I was I was stretching myself too far on different things, and mm. it was more of a case of I needed to refocus, and that's that's what I've done. I'm I, then again, I'm in a position now where I'm going. Oh, I could probably pick up something else. You, you know? don't look you don't look as stressed, and you look a little bit healthy for it, mate. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I fe- I I do I do feel like I'm I'm getting back to where I was health wise a bit more well not that but yeah a bit more brighter because well, obviously then you you factor in age and, and stuff like that but no I'd um, set myself some goals health goals life goals that sort of thing and yeah see see what happens I I, I think you view time a lot differently don't you once you've sort yeah. of hit your mid 20s you, yeah. you see things on a different and when you hit your 30 goal. you're like you hit that kind of goal of going, have I done enough or do I need to do more? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of glad I did a lot the last couple of years because it made me realise that I, the only time I want to do a lot really is if I'm a touring musician or or a, or a, a fully working actor again. Do you know what mm. I mean? Where it's a case of you, then you are on that chock schedule, but then you have like three months off, that sort of thing. Um, I could suit that lifestyle, but doing something consistently all the time, working yourself and then sort of like not having time for anything else. You just, yeah. Because I think what you find in that time, you try and make time for yourself and yep. that comes at the sacrifice of health and sleep, doesn't it? Yeah, you had that whole thing, right, I'm going to have an hour here at like 10 when you should be sleeping, yet then that go to like 2 in the morning, like, oh, I'm meant to be asleep now. So, yeah. And you eat out of necessity rather than eating properly yeah. and that builds and, and eating, you, that sort of thing, and it all just stacks. So, yeah, this is sort of a thing at the start of the podcast. If you feel like you're in that situation, you <laughs> could actually do something about it while you still have control of your body and your life. Trust me, it, it it's kind of worth considering. Mm. Right. Let's get into the Sheffield Wednesday stuff for everybody who didn't skip. And if you did <laughs> skip, here we go. Sheffield yeah. Wednesday talk. So, since we last spoke, Sheffield Wednesday played Bristol City and won 2 1. Talk me through this game. I was concerned about going into this game a little bit because Bristol City are very inconsistent. One week they turn up, the next week they don't. And you know what? I was pleasantly surprised how we went to this game. We really went at a good pace and tried to just match them like for like. The one thing I did notice, you are noticing a Barry Bannon playing with a little bit more control and discipline because of the yellow card situation. But I think it's improving his game. He's not tearing around that much. He's managing to stay in a little bit more the position wise and being able to kind of vocalize where other players are meant to go instead of him going, I'm just going to go do it. And I think that's helping. I reckon we're losing him at Rotherham. I reckon yeah, we're after I Rotherham, do. we're losing yeah, him. Yeah, I think Cause we he's are gonna well. Because <laughs> even if he plays really well, he's going to get baited or tripped into, or, com- or deceived into something at Rotherham. So we've, got to, we've got to prepare. Something. We've got to prepare for the time after Rotherham to not have Barry Bannon. Basically, Plymouth and Leeds. Yeah. Um, but we go, we go in the lead. You know what? It's a damn nice goal. It's a very nice goal. Yeah, really the well turn worked. that he should not have been given that much base to turn at all. If you're giving him that much base, it's ridiculous. It's a really good goal. And you're thinking, Ugbo is just really starting to show what he can do. 
And I, and again, I keep saying it, Cardiff City fan for like, all he does is score goals. That's what we needed. That's literally all we needed. And he's doing that. Their equaliser though, another set piece goal. It's another set piece goal. Yeah. And it's bad marking again. Uh, when you yeah, actually the look at it. Fantastic. It was, it was just one of those situations where you were like, well, here we go. How do we react from this? Mm. Um, and I just think Ugbo has taken the, the responsibility on his shoulders of being that striker, yeah. the only striker. Because we were looking, remember, we were in a situation in January where we brought it, we were trying to bring in Maguire as well. So we yep. had options. And I think Maguire was meant to be our front runner, actually. Yeah. But uh, but we brought Ugbo in and Ugbo has become the only sort of striking signing we've got. And he's, for me at the minute, he's the first name on the team sheet. Oh, 100 Because, you know, he's, I really, really like him and I hope, that we can get in for a reasonable deal, no matter what Same. situation we're in at the end of the season, because we need a poacher like that because we create chances. Yeah. And it was what, it was one of those situations of, I still think under Darren Moore, we created chances and we, we, we talked for ages about why don't we finish him with consistently? Michael Smith got a lot of goals last season, but I don't think he was as clinical as he could be. Whereas Ugbo seems clinical. Yeah. He you gets to like the chances he the and chance, he finishes he'll take them. it. Yeah. Yeah. I think the I think um, the stat that annoys me is if you're thinking about when they're conceding goals, it's 32 from open play, it's 10 from set pieces, five from penalties, three from counter attacks, and two from own goals. But I get 10, nervous whenever we get a set piece against us now. Yeah, yeah, same. If you, and if you want ours, we got 18 from open play, five set pieces, three counter attacks, and we've had zero penalties this year. Mm. And but it, the way they turned it back around, though, they went. They didn't. A, a Sheffield went the team a couple of months ago. The head would have dropped and the floodgate would have opened. Granted, I know some people might say, "Look at Huddersfield, that did happen." Yeah, that happens. But it would have properly opened. But we got back at it, and I thought the cross from Valentine to Johnson was really good. And Johnson's shot. For me, it was a dangle shot. It's just the depth touch of a header. Just being in the right place. It's that poacher, like you said. We haven't had a goal poacher since Gary Hooper. A yeah, I agree with that. And we just saw we just saw it through. And I thought Valentin for me is getting better and better. He's certain and some people said he's defending lacking, but we're starting to see that what he said he could do, like we're going forward, trying to make things happen. And I think we're starting to see the best out of him now. I think Beadle made some good saves, but we have to talk about the only blip in this is Bernard. Yeah, I think, right, I'm going to say, because I think you and Jack both went a bit too hard on him. I, 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 that's what I want to say, really. I think you went in quite hard on him. I, I don't necessarily... He played on that yellow for a long time, right? A long time. I thought he was coming off earlier. It was a stupid challenge, the first one, and we were lucky it was yellow. It was a stupid challenge, but for me, in the position we're in and the discipline, to get two double yellows back-to-back week after week, it shows that he's trying to do it. The first one, he could have quite easily let a wick way go What do you mean? Has he been sent off before? No, it's back-to-back double yellows. Fletcher last week, now this week. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna say well, he's not got back to back, but yeah, in terms of in terms, in terms of, of the the team, yes. The yeah. first one, I don't mind a professional foul like that. Like it stops it. It you don't like it, but it stopped it going forward. But the second one, you could tell he was struggling, and I think he was about to come off anyway, like you said. And I think it was just unlucky he made that tackle. Uh, it was the one where, maybe where you you question Danny there just going maybe take him off a little bit sooner than that and then we don't add the ban. But it's true. Happened. But I think I still think he's our I still think he's our best centre back. Oh, God, so it's yeah. one of those things 100%. where you, you you take the risk with it. And yeah. we what I was impressed with is all right. Actually, I'm not going to lie. We 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 were not great at the end of the game. We we saw the game out, but I was we so I was worried. Pressure. Yeah. Exactly. Um, 10 men in that situation, I was I was going through my fingernails, basically. Um, and it the wasn't, annoying thing, it we wasn't didn't a have someone who got the leg to come off the bench like a Bavada to just 
as they were attacking Gapol because he was trying to do it, but his legs were he was knackered. Yeah, I saw good. a poll. Somebody was making a poll on Twitter about like who's better, Forestieri or Pervader or something. And I was like, can you really ask that? Because for me, like Pervader's shown good flashes, but Forestieri had an end product, which we've not yeah. seen from Pervader yet. So yeah. it's one of those things where I'm like, I you can't even really ask that yet, surely. You can't, completely. I just don't get why. I know we get into the hype of things, but let's not ask questions like that at this stage, you know, because the, I want to see end product from Pavane. He's got so much, right? But it's one of those things where he starts adding goals to his games. Game Actually, goal. if he starts adding goals to his game, we are never getting him on a permanent <laughs> because well, he will do, be... Well, this is the thing. What you, he's a free agent. He is, yes, but I'm saying if he starts adding goals to his games this season, there's going to be so many I d- I clubs don't that want to take I, a chance on him. Fair, I don't know because I have a funny feeling... Danny may have already turned that grew gr- going, I like it here, I want to stay here, kind of thing. Oh, yeah, I definitely the think there's play. some of that. I think if we, right, if we stay up, Danny's the manager, it's pressing forward. I think very, I think very much Pervader will become a yeah. Wednesday player. But it's th- there's still too much up in the air at the minute. And, and we'll go into that when we go into the championship review. So these are the results that follow. So there's been a couple of match days. We obviously didn't play in midweek, but some clubs did. Cardiff and Blackburn came to a nil, uh, nil nil draw. Ipswich beat Rotherham 4 3. They were lucky. Plymouth lost to Ipswich. Mm. They got it right yeah, on yeah. the death. West Brom beating Plymouth away from home at uh, 3 0. And Hull City beat Southampton 2 1. Southampton have, are having a wobble and mm. no, it's not actually helped us as well, no. um, which hasn't been great. Then we go to the weekend, Coventry nil, Preston three, Leeds three, Leicester one, which is Left ripped open the title race. Yeah. Um, Hull, well, it's not ripped open the title race, has it? Or has it? Uh, a little bit. A little bit, but there's still like a cushion there. Um, Hull one, West Brom one, Blackburn one, Norwich one, Ipswich three, Birmingham one. QPR 2, Rotherham 1. Mm. Rotherham were winning this game, yeah. weren't they? Yeah, they were. They were winning it and it went to 1-1. One, one. And I was like, oh, that could... I was like, 1-1, one, one, just be 1-1. One, one. And then, yeah, that happened. <laughs> That's the thing I worry about because Rotherham aren't going to do us the... Fa- I just get a really bad feeling about Saturday. We'll go into that, but it's one of those things where I'm like, they, the are other, lo- the other they thing can't the QPR buy a game. win or a draw. The other thing about the QPR game, a lot of people got a bit annoyed with when fans. A little chair played, and with everything that's going on with that, it just, yeah. <laughs> he's been sentenced, Danny. What? Yeah, he's been sentenced. Yeah. Yes, I, I don't understand that. No, um, I don't. Cardiff 2, Stoke 1, Southampton 1, Millwall 2. So Millwall getting a result there, because we need Millwall to get dragged into this properly yep. as well. Stoke losing was good. Cardiff does a favour there. Wednesday 2, Bristol City 1. Sunderland 1, Swansea 2. Watford 1, Huddersfield could have done without 2. That one. Really could have done without that one. Because again, Picking actually the you know, Huddersfield were losing, but Watford equalised and it was one all. And then... Watford were just naff. <laughs> does my nut in. Does my nut in. Plymouth 2, uh, Middlesbrough nil. But now the interesting thing with this one... The wrong way around is Millwall has gone back to Harris as their manager. They sacked their manager, so they could probably see a revival. The talk that Stoke City manager could get sacked as well, like you look at the table, you look at the table, nearly everybody from Cardiff down has changed the manager once or twice this season. Well, let's look at the table. So Rotherham sit at the bottom <laughs> with 19 points. Can't buy a win at the minute. Sheffield Wednesday, 23rd is Sheffield Wednesday on 32 points. Above them is Stoke City, who drop into the relegation zone on 35 points. QPR, 22nd, 35 points, joint with Stoke City, which means we are only three points from safety, but we wouldn't be on goal difference. Obviously, goal difference, we, we still need to nah, clear goal that ground. Goal difference is annoying. Yes, it very much is. So it's points on the board for Wednesday, it has to be. But Stoke having a wobble is very much problematic because... For them, because they are dragged well into it now. Millwall, 36 points. We are only four points from Millwall, which is 20th. 
Huddersfield, 37 points. We're still only five points off Huddersfield. Yep. Huddersfield are also in 19th. Uh, 18th is Birmingham, 38 points. We're only six points it's off tight. Birmingham now. They've got a game in hand, though, to be fair. Um, but we're only seven points off Blackburn Rovers in 16th. Yeah. And technically, well, well, we're eight points off 15th. That's how crazy this table yeah. is, and we are second to bottom. So I'll, I'll there is a lot again, to play for now. What I said recently, the reason Danny Rule gives me hope is because he came into a team that was 12 points away from safety and put it back to three. He's now done it again to take it back to three. He's just got to yeah. find that next gear and next level now with the lads to get it over We the have line. the perfect opportunity this weekend. If, if we are ever, ever going to not do a Sheffield Wednesday, which would be, let's be honest, to do a Sheffield Wednesday would to be to lose this match against Rotherham because yep. you know it's coming, right? And I'm not, I'm just saying it because then when we don't do it, it'll be fantastic. But... The reason it's huge is because it's three points if we win it on a day that QPR play Leicester, who will be wanting to fight back from their wobble. Yep. So even if they get a draw there, QPR will only get a point, which would put us a um sorry, it would that would put us a point behind QPR. Yes, yep. it would if they got a point, but if they lost, we'd be level. Stoke play Middlesbrough, which means Again, we'd be level on points with Stoke if they lost that. Yep. Huddersfield play Leeds. If Leeds lose, if Leeds beat Huddersfield and we win, we'd be two points behind Huddersfield. We would be level on points with the. There is a chance that QPR, Huddersfield, and Stoke all lose. They are really tough yep. fixtures, right? And if that happens, we are level on points with twenty first. If we I'm, beat Rotherham, I'm and we are technically now. joint safe. If we can get to the Ipswich game, which is... Where's the Ipswich game? Because I think that's the last game for the international break. Uh, on the 16th of March and be out the relegation zone, there's a chance. Or getting closer to it. I think for me, Rotherham Plymouth leads... Rotherham, you hope we get something because they're so out of sorts. Plymouth's at home, so I think it gives us a fighting chance. The League United game, we just try and do what we can at home and just pray for the best. Yeah, so six points there, right, would put us on 38 points, which is currently where Birmingham sit in 18th. Now, Ooh. you look at... You look... Uh, if we get six points from those fixtures, we are well within a fighting chance. Yeah. Because even if the other teams get results around us, there's, there's, there's clubs down there, Birmingham included, Huddersfield, Millwall, QPR, Stoke, they've all got a scrap for points themselves. If we get six points before Leeds and then try and pick it up, we, we right, here's what I actually think we need. Go on. Because if the, because Wednesday actually, do you know what's actually nice about Wednesday at the minute? Apart from the Huddersfield blip, we're losing against teams you'd expect us to lose against because yeah, they are quality yeah. sides. Whereas before, Wednesday have lost to sides that you just go, why are we losing Agreed. to these teams when we are actually better than these sides, right? I'm not saying we're better than Plymouth, for example, sort of thing. But it's a game that you would think is winnable if we perform to what we can perform. Mm. So if we, can actually, if we are expected to lose against Leeds and Ipswich, we need to beat Rotherham and Plymouth. We yeah, need to do it. Exactly. It's just, it's because just one then we you open, you get a six point buffer break, sort of thing. And then if we have a buffer and just go for lever at the end, the, the thing is the way we're playing at the minute, if, even away from home, we looked decent versus Millwall and that was a poor Millwall team. Yeah. I think we're going against a poor Rotherham team this weekend. And people are like, you said, it'll be the Wednesday kind of thing. Let's hope it's not because Got to remember, his first win Danny Rule as manager was against Rotherham at home. He already knows what a derby feels like in that term, yeah. derby, air quotes. Um, I think it'll get him up for this because he'll know how close it is. Well, it's, I think it's crucial because you think about who we've got to play. We want to be in a strong position 
So when we play QPR, we're putting pressure on them. When we play Stoke, we're putting pressure on them. Yeah. We've only got two of those sides to put pressure on, right, that we actually play, and it's going to be six pointers, basically. Yep. So we need to make sure when we're in that situation, four of the fixtures before we play QPR, three of them are Leeds, Ipswich, and Middlesbrough, which are really tough fixtures mm. given given the stature of those sides. And then Swansea's not, you know, easiest, but it's one of those things that you think if most winnable one out of there is probably Swansea. Watch yeah. us win the other three now. There is a there is a chance that we have a blistering form and we actually if we pick up say nine points from Rotherham, Plymouth, Leeds, Ipswich, then like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I think the annoying we thing pick is up- there's, a, there's a lot of teams around us who are also coming into that kind of form at the same time. I'm going to do my thing again and say this. So we've got six, we've got five matches to play, 15 points available. I think we need nine points. Yeah, I think you're right. In March. You know, mm. I do think we need nine points. You know what the crazy thing is? Well, we're getting to March and I'm I'm only realising how close the end of this season is. I know. I know. Has the um, hasn't League One gone for a week or so? I, like, I think so, yeah. Is it? No, no, I don't I know. I, don't know. I can't remember. It's the Premier League that goes on longer. Yeah. It, it, ju- it just um, feels like such a long season, this one we went to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but if we can get to it, it's one of those things that we're all talking about Danny Rule leaving and stuff like that, but we're near the end of the season. It'll be that building process again if we yeah. can stabilise. That but yeah, stabilise. Um, there's, there's not really any news this week, to be honest. There's, it, um, yeah. there's Liam Palmer making, he's like the ninth highest appearance maker, is it now? Also, I'm going to bring you up on that. We had a podcast episode where you didn't think he'd get to 400 odd appearances. No, I didn't. Did I? Yes. You said, oh, Check no, you won't reads. get to that. I don't think I said that. Did I? I think, yeah, you did. <laughs> I've got, there's no evidence, so <laughs> you're not presenting me with evidence. It might exist. I don't remember that. Um. I remember we did about appearances where we think he would get to. He's getting closer to 450, and I think he will. What's he on now? 432. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he'll probably make that. Yeah. All right. I don't remember saying it. I actually don't because I thought I agreed that he could do that, but I thought we'd be in a situation where we'd released him by that point. Hmm. I, it, was, it was like early podcast episode, I think. Well, it's one of those things when we saw him. Yeah, if it was especially in the relegation season, I said that. We've had two seasons in League One. I wouldn't have seen him there at this point. <laughs> yeah, true. Here at this point, you know, but he's kept the consistency. Mm. Um, so you look at which is a lot, a lot, played, what a lot of people though. slated him for for a long it's time. It's insane. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, it is crazy. And there's some players there you don't even remember. I forgot we had Jane Tavernier at the club. When? We had Jane Tavernier at the club. When? Seriously, when was that? I will tell you. He was on loan, if I remember correctly. Uh, 2011, 2012, he made seven appearances. When? Was that a promotion <laughs> season? I think, uh, 2011, yeah, would have been, wouldn't it? I genuinely don't remember him playing for us. That's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> Look at some of the names, though. Go through the list. <laughs> it's insane. Oh, is that what that is? You've put something in the document that's really I like on, I will tiny. Send you. I will send you a better. Sorry, link. no. I can zoom. I can zoom in modern technology. I've got eyes. <laughs> so the, oh, the players is playing with. Yeah. Um. 
any interesting ones there. There's a better... Oh, let me send you this. Oh, Stevie May, what a legend. No, I wrecked the career by getting his name on the back of shirt. My fault. All your fault, mate. Um, Ed Marshall. Oh, yeah, Tavernier. Yeah. There you go. You got Reef McKay. Remember Reese? Camille. Yeah, you see, he was good in FIFA. I remember Sanchez him having Watt. a lot of potential in FIFA. I remember having Sanchez Watt. Uh, we all remember Royston Hang Drenster. on. That does a thing, though, because technically, if we've had Tavernier, that makes his inform card. He's got an inform card at the minute on FIFA. It makes him, <laughs> if you're building a past and present, you could have him in. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> That's just clicked in my brain. <laughs> of course, we got Martinez, who was on loan. Um, oh, let's have a look. Did Lena help? We have Will Keane, who's now doing well at Preston. Um, it says something interesting here. I, I need to check this because there seems to be a player that I don't recognise on this list. Who? Uh, it's an Alman Abdi. Who? I'm not sure. I don't, that um, must be a mistake. Oh, yeah, there's another name on here. Urban Emanuelson? No idea. Nah, nah, can't Gosh. be real. No. No. <laughs> I spelt Sean Flair's name wrong as well. I forgot we had Nielsen. Oh, De Cruz. Yeah. De Cruz. God, he was actually on the podcast. Where we, we were, he was not on the podcast, but he was on the... We had the podcast yeah. when he was playing for us, and I just forgot he existed until just now. <laughs> you know what the one I find interesting on this list, though? It's Josh Onimer, on. and he's still a free agent. I've just signed him on Football Manager, actually. He's, he's still a free agent. Like, you look at this and you think, my God, we've gone through so many players, but you think, you forget how many game Palmer played for us. Yeah. Crazy. Ah, oh, insane. Benaccio. We had a we had a we had a couple of seasons of signing like Sasso, Venasio, brilliant centre yeah. backs on loan and then not coming back. You can't afford them, mate. <laughs> That's true. It's just like just spent it all on Jordan Rhodes. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, Jacob Butterfield. Oh, what a legend! He's now in non-league. I'm not Are surprised. They, uh, played like it when he played for us. Well, Daniel Pudel played for Hallam. Now. Yeah, that list is depressing for half yeah. of it. <laughs> Moving on. There you go. I thought you might want to... Just hearing you So da me, Danny James Roll Tavenier. has done... <laughs> yeah, no, that, that did click in my brain there. Danny Roll has done an interview with Kicker, um, translated by Dortmund London. I'm going to read Dom Housen's Twitter thread, basically. Yep. So you can also go and look at that, but he, he posted it for easy access on Twitter, um, and this was from the kicker article on the January window, Danny rule said every coach always wants to make, uh, wants more, make more. No, no, he doesn't want to make more. New players. <laughs> he wants more new players, <laughs> but the situation is difficult. A relegation threatened club can't get all the players. It wants. I've lost the thread. You amateur James. What are you doing? Oh, this website. We would like to, we would like to sign one or two more players in addition to the new players we were able to significantly uh, develop the I got team it. in each I got it. individual. Do you know what's great? Go on. Twitter just decided to uh, stop having threaded tweets work on this desktop version. So thanks, <laughs> Elon. Um, we'd like to have signed one or two more players in addition to the new players. We were able to significantly develop the team and each individual. Targeted youth development is part of the plan because we have the second oldest team in the league. That's interesting, actually. We'll break this down at different points. It's a very interesting point that you're looking at the youth, and yeah. I hope he's been screaming about youth academies, youth facilities, training facilities, things yeah, like that. Right. Well, that's the stuff we need to work on. It, it, the Definitely Wednesday is very... Sorry, go that on. That Chancery kind of neglected over his tenureship is improving the infrastructure, and he always said he wanted to do the infrastructure when we got to the Prem. It's been nine years. Yeah. You can't do that now. You need to improve it now. 
Yeah, that's exactly it. Exactly it. Um, it made sense in the first couple of years to, okay, we'll do it when we get to the Prem, mm. but then we should have really started looking. We, we can't just get, oh, we'll get to the Prem and we'll do it because it's not happened, does it? No. Sheffield Wednesday has very lean structures. There's the owner and then there's me. The two of us make all the decisions together. All the transfers go over my desk. All contract extensions. The hotel bookings. I have to approve everything. Right. There's a couple of things that came from this. So everybody went, oh my God, how could he have to deal with all that responsibility? All of that is how shambly a reward. And I agree, there should be an infrastructure where that's people's jobs. I just think he's saying there that he is given a... He's he's got he's trying to make the point that he got full range. nothing gets done without his say. He yeah. got full range you know, to have what he wants in place and how he wants it. The no, he basically that's the way no I took it. it. Yeah, same. But I, I don't think he's on. I don't think he's on booking dot com booking the <laughs> hotels. <laughs> All right. I think Edison, he's just can approving you just that. Training for me a minute. Why? I just need to go on my iPhone and book a hotel for the lads and try to buy something that's in our price range. <laughs> I see that, that there's got to be someone because if there's not somebody at the club that's checking that there's the right facilities for the players mm-hmm. in these hotels, checking that there's if there's not somebody in the club that's doing that, then it needs, needs to be it. because that yeah. needs to be that shouldn't be a case well, of oh, Danny, is this going to be all right? It's more of a case of Danny, we're going here. Any problems, sort of let me know. Stamps the yeah. approval. He trusts the team, but he might be a manager that wants to look over that. If there's not somebody there at doing the ro- that sort of thing, there needs to be. But well, here's the thing it's good to see that he's got that relationship and he, he has the hand in it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing for me is that one of the things he started doing since he come in, the team even stay in the hotel before a home game. That's interesting, isn't it? Because mm. you've got that togetherness. Yeah. It's also a case if he does what, if you notice, he does what Klopp does with the fans. Yeah. He's establishing that connection. Yeah. And um, I think it's just the way, I see a lot of comparisons in him, actually. Mm. Um, but it's one of those things, where, the way he's taken to the club is like Klopp took to Liverpool. Yeah, definitely. Not saying it's the same level, but you can see similarities if you look at mm. them side by side. Yeah. Carrying on with this, so. Um, this is from Danny. I want a staff with very different profiles. For example, an English speaking coach who knows the league and one who is the link to the academy. The biggest challenge for me was the transfer window. So obviously Powell has been a fantastic addition as, yeah. as you know, he's probably right up there with Danny rule for me, Breen brilliant addition to the club. Oh yeah. Um, Definitely. carries on saying with the potential of the fans and the charisma, Sheffield Wednesday can become a premier league club again, but you have to invest a lot for that. Not just money, but also in terms of identity. We have now provided the impetus for this. And that's exactly it. We play a certain way. He wants to play a way of football. You're going to fit into that. And you're going to you're going to mold that. You have of, to mold the club mm, into that. It's not a case of what it used to be. We'll just get a player in who will just play how they want to and we'll play around them. No, you have to fit into this style. If you do not press as much as he wants you to press, you ain't going to be at the club that long. Yeah, exactly. And I actually think his style is quite modern in the in the terms of it's one of the more it's a style that is played a little bit more. So when we're looking at academies, we're gonna we're gonna reap the rewards a little bit more because players are going through that. So you'll have academies that are doing the ticker tacker, the in one press, sense, all that sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? So they're gonna be players that yeah. are used to it. In one sense, this is why a good reason we didn't keep like a Delhi Bashiru. He wouldn't have fit the tactic. I think he probably had the potential to be molded into it, but it's a case of was his was his head there? Mm. Probably not, and that's a big thing. I think a lot of it is attitude, and yeah. he talks. He, he, he said, obviously, we're going to have to invest a lot of money, but you do have to invest the right. I, it'd be interesting. He talks about identity, but I think infrastructure should be a thing, and that, I guess that can come with a club's identity and the yeah. club's growth. You you need the infrastructure to become a sustainable Premier League club because it's um, it's like if you look at the other side of the city. Yes, I'd trade their results and their promotions to the Premier League and stuff like that, but they don't seem to have the they, they can't seem to stabilize once they're up there. No, you know, and I don't know what that is specifically there, but you'd want you'd think of clubs that do it with a certain format. I'd like us to get into a position like the Leipzig model, for example, the sort of you know the Red Bull model where you are a club that are destined for success on all platforms because every avenue is being looked at for, and it's about sustainability. Yeah. 
And that's that's exactly. the thing you need, not just a flash. I think Chancery's been too flash in the pan with stuff. Oh, we'll try it. We'll go for the gamble. We'll do that. Whereas you need to actually build, okay, we'll take the risks, but the risks have got to also have a fallback that's built on stability and you've sustainability. Got to have, you've got to have that. If it doesn't work, we've got a plan B, plan C, plan D. Exactly. Carrying on with this, and he continues with, the right adjustments need to be made in the summer with 20 contracts expiring, a lot of to be done right when putting together the squad with its history and tradition is a very special club. I am, do you know when I hear 20 contracts expiring, usually I'm like, oh no, we're losing all these players. But for once, I'm like, this is so exciting because mm. there's no way structures to think about. You could, if Danny is the manager and we stay up, he could just go, whoop, yep. build. And that's and, exciting. Yeah. The thing is, we still don't technically know what a Danny rule signing is. We don't really. And no. if Ugbo's the side Ugbo's a side of it, Ugbo and Pervader feel like really two of his. Okay, we'll, yeah. we'll forget about Pedersen. He didn't have the great debut, did he? Um Bloody but, injured. And Beadle's all right as well. But like yeah. if you think about the players he looks at. Yes, please. Yeah, definitely. After around ten years in other roles, I'm currently very happy now to be head coach in the English version, i.e. with managerial duties. Obviously the difference with being just a head coach is you've not got the structure above his head. He's used to that, you know, sporting director, head coach, technical director, that sort of thing. Yeah. This gives me great fulfillment. I go to work every day with a smile on my face. I go to work every day with a smile on my face, despite the challenging situation in the league table. At the moment, I'm concentrating fully on the season until the, May the 5th so that it ends the way we want to. We will sit down and as together and assess the situation, but I feel we are making progress and I want to see that through. Mm. So either way, he's here till the end of the season, but I now, actually think it's talks about he's, he's looking to the future as well with Wednesday yeah. and a rebuild. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people have, there's a, a bit of that within it as well uh, that didn't get put in that one. He said he's still open about dreams of returning to Germany in the Bundesliga and people have gone, oh, he's off it. No, he's a German manager that would like to do it again in Germany as a head coach. That's the difference. Yes. Yeah. Kind of no, no, right. Don't so basically, if Bayern are on the phone tomorrow, he's going to Bayern, right? Okay. <laughs> but... <laughs> Don't read too much into it, kind of thing. You look, you look at, you look at how he does, how he does things. He's he's from the mold of Ralph Ragnick, who's known to be like the godfather of this Klopp style football kind of thing, and you're seeing it more and more and more now. And you look at the situation, like look at Sasha Lands, his. Son-in-law is Timo Werner, which I completely forgot yeah. about. <laughs> but you... I didn't even know it. How would you know that? <laughs> oh, I, I got told it ages ago, and I completely you've forgot. Got, you've got too much time on the internet as well. Yeah. Um, but carry but on. the thing that gets me with this is that people have kind of gone a little bit in the, oh, he's off then kind of thing. For me, it's not that. For me, this is just an injury going, I'm having fun, I'm managing. And I don't know where people have got this whole thing, oh, he's off in the summer then. It's like, no, this is someone who's building if we're in championship or league one. People are just I, people are just looking for it because that's what they, we think the narrative uh, will yeah, be. You know, um, I don't whereas... think he can leave when they, unless another club comes in for him, that's the difference. If another club comes into it, that's different. But I don't think he can leave Sheffield Wednesday if we went got relegated, it doesn't look good on him. If he's not, I also I also again. think it's a case of he he hasn't had the chance to build his team yet. No, what's to say? Right, unless it's a really good offer and money talks, and it's a club that are actually pushing for championship promotion, like top like six. Yes, yeah. if we're in the championship, why would you want to start again when you can literally you've already got your team in place, you know the club, you know the fans, you've built a rapport? Doesn't make sense. So that's why I'm feeling a little bit more confident in that. But, you know, Wednesday are a funny thing. I could be going around Aldi again like I was in the summer and I could get 10 missed calls from Jake. And I'm like, what do you want? And then he <laughs> tells like me that. that the manager's left after we've just been promoted. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? All right, <laughs> let me just put this bread in the... Let me the, the, check the, the out with part, this bread and we'll that go. Was, oh, I'm in the cheese aisle. Just give me a minute. I'll talk to you in a moment. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, I just because I remembered I'd just got some bread. I remember, I remember distinctly having bread in my hand <laughs> at this point of the phone call. <laughs> where where so. were you when you found out Darren Moore got sacked? <laughs> yeah, it was the new Diana, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but let's move on to the weekend then. So we play Rotherham before we see each other yes. next. We've talked about this a lot. It's yeah. a must-win, isn't it, Jake? There's not much yeah. more to say There's on nothing it. Nothing else you can really say. Their home record is good, apart uh, apart from their way record, and they've lost the last five. We've got to win. It's just simple. we got to win. Yeah. And I think if we get one, the floodgate could open it. They do. Go for hell for Levin. Get that bloody goal difference down. Where were they last? Were they at home against QPR? Uh, they were away. Their last home game, I believe they got a win. Right, let's look at their fixtures. So, they didn't have not won in the last five, mate. Oh, yeah, of course they have. I just said that. Well. So, <laughs> they were away at QPR. Then they were away at Ipswich. Their last home game was a 1-0 loss to Watford. And then yeah. the last home game before that was a 2-1 loss to Hull. The last yeah, home the game before that. They have 19 shots, one on target in that uh, one versus um, Watford. And then if you right, look at the look one here. versus Hull, they had 11 shots and six on target. And that Hull They lost game to was... Stoke as well in January mm. at home. Their last home win was Boxing Day against Middlesbrough. All right. Their last home draw was 29th of December against Sunderland. They have lost every single time they have played at home since then. They've not actually... Oh, my God. What? They've not won a game since Boxing Day. No. Come on, Wednesday, please! <laughs> Don't do a Sheffield Wednesday. This team have won since Boxing Day. Or if we play out, we did against Bristol City. If we play out, we did against a couple of teams we played recently. We'll be fine. Mm. I ha- I do have but something it's, I am it's, slightly I concerned about that we're gonna have to have uh, Diaby and um, Owit way at the back, but. We make do with what we've got. We'll see how we feel in the next episode of Talking Wednesday, but that is all I've got this week, Jake, unless you've got anything to add. No, that's it. Enjoy your rest of your weeks and weekend and hopefully get all three points. Yes, and apologies that this podcast is a little bit later. We had some scheduling things and uh, I'm pretty sure this probably got, either won't go up till late Tuesday or midday Wednesday because of upload times, editing and things like that. Um, But yes, thank you very much for your patience and we will see you. Take care, obviously, as I always say to you, but take care again. (laughs) And we will see, I've lost my brain now. And we will see you in the next episode of Talking Wednesday. See ya.